Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, welcome to another fantastic Ask an Engineer. Broadcasting live from the downtown Adafruit headquarters in West Soho. I'm Lady Ada, I'm the engineer. With me is Phil, with Camera Control. We also have a Samsung pick in place with us. Yeah, this is our new Bitcoin miner. <laughs> um, Anyways, we're here. Um, we have all sorts of fun stuff to show on the show, including this gigantic machine, which we'll probably uh, poke around in a little bit. Yeah, we're in the production area. On Let's, uh, yeah, what's on tonight's show? On tonight's show, the code is origami. We'll be talking about that in a bit. But the code is origami. 10% off everything that's in stock in the Adafruit store. Show and tell. Packed show and tell. Awesome show and tell. We are going to talk about that. Pack of the mailbag is going to bring in some, some letters. Adafruit learning system. Big updates. Some fun oldie book goodies. Time Travel Tuesday. We look back and make your history and beyond. Wearable Wednesday, all things in the world of wearable electronics and special video. 3D Thursday, where we look at 3D printing and beyond. Pi Day, which is a full day of Pi projects. I pick our favorite one, which was ours this week. <laughs> we'll have new products. Top secret. Ooh. We'll answer your questions. We'll have a trivia question. Fun and like uh, we might show a picture of a cat. All that and more on... Ask an engineer. That's nice little animation. Yeah. I love it. Go. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's what's going on here. Okay. So we're here. We moved. We were in um, shipping and receiving. Yeah. We, we're trying there. to we're trying to do the show from different locations. Um, this week, uh, there is a compressor in the background, a very large compressor, and our new Samsung pick and place machine, twenty thousand components per hour. We're getting training all next week. Yeah, you need and, a big uh, compressor to pick up that many parts, so that's yeah. why we have a huge-ass compressor as well. Yeah, and as you can see, we've started the process of uh, blinging it out. Um, purple, Bling! purple LEDs on the does not come that way on the inside. No, matches my hair. I like it. Yeah, well, everything here kind of has that magenta pink stuff. And then um, the other thing that we've got is this is the compressor um, over here. Yeah, uh, we had to run uh, special power. This building. One of the reasons we came here to Adafruit is because we really needed beefy power. So. Yeah, this we have 600 amps here. Yeah. And uh, this isn't just 600 amps, but I'm glad we had 600 amps. Yeah, we might need it one day. But this is so our yeah, compressor. The, the compressor um, is 5 horsepower, 220 amps, uh, yeah. 20, sorry, 220 volts, 20 amps, 3 50 phase. Hertz, 3 phase. 3 phase. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the air dryer on top, which is another 20 amps. Yeah. Um, but that's single phase, uh, 110. Yeah, and one of the cool things they do is after you deliver it, you hook it up and everything, um, to make sure it works, they actually came up with something clever. So to test it, the first thing we did was turn it on, there's a big safety switch, and then when you turn it on, it says okay. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, if it's, wired, if it's wired incorrectly, of course it will suck the air instead of blow it, and so yeah. you won't see the okay. So. What we really liked about this was like we imagined like how many years they must be selling this compressor until somebody was like, we keep having installation problems. How about we just like get a piece of paper and like yeah. write okay in big letters? And, and the, uh, the, the air dryer on top um, has its own uh, power. It's just 110. Yeah, volt, 20 amp. Uh, 20 amp. But I don't think it's actually 20. But they say they want they yeah. want a 20 amp breaker on it. Yeah. So. And uh, we'll show uh, a little. We, we have a couple things about the the pick and place. Yeah. That I thought will, uh, the pick and place is a totally separate thing. Although the pick and place doesn't draw that much power, it is three phase, two oh eight. Yeah. Uh, someone asked, will the neighbors be okay with the noise? Well, we're in a uh, zone for manufacturing space. And, this is not uh, an apartment. Yeah. This we're no Adafruit is no longer in an apartment. We're actually in a factory. We're a zoned in factory. Mm -hmm. Lamore is on the New York City Industrial Manufacturing Council. The compressor that we have here. Um, is uh, quieter than the one that we even had in our apartment back when we were running the company out of an apartment. Yeah, it's, basically. It, this is about this. Well, it's about the same uh, decibels, but it will only be running once a day instead yeah. of running kind of like 50. Yeah, percent because time. it's a it's a massive. Yeah, it, just, it fills up this tank. Here, yeah, I'll get out of the way. You There's can the see tank. the tank is this like black yeah. oblong thing, and then the dryer is the red thing on top, and the dryer yeah. um, takes the the moisture out of the air. Also mm. cleans the air. It's it's a screw type rotary rotary screw type compressor, which is why it's fairly quiet. The dryer is actually what's really loud, yeah. not the compressor. Compressor is pretty quiet. The dryer's loud, yeah. but hopefully you know won't be 
Yeah. So a lot of the I time. think that's the first time a three-phase air compressor was broadcasted over Ustream. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Uh, you should check out the three-phase YouTube yeah. channel, though, because it's all three-phase all the time. Yeah. We might move the compressor over there in the corner and then run. Yeah, run a line. Run a line yeah. because, you know, we can put it in a storage area and then, you know, run. You can run a, a, a compressed line, you know, yeah. half a mile. Um, it doesn't use that much air. It just it wants, like, a steady supply of clean, compressed air. I think it only uses like one CFM or something. It's, it's not that much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Compressors are us. Code is origami. Ten percent off everything in the Adafruit store. Um, go get some stuff. Uh, yes. Code runs till midnight, so um, you'll have a little bit of time right now, and of course before the the uh, the show ends. Yeah. So let's hop over to the so show. So if you job. like if you like this expensive equipment, that we yeah, we got to pay for this stuff. Well, we pay. We I'll pay, pay for, for it. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we still have not taken loans or venture capital. Um, all this is uh, uh, our savings and putting our money into the business. Um, yeah. We just pay taxes. Man, when you're running a company in the U.S. and in New York, and um, you uh, you're not losing money. Yeah. Man, do you have to pay a lot of money? Yeah, we have to pay taxes. We have to pay a lot. We have to pay uh, federal, state, city, and then they come up with all these other extra taxes. There's like the city incorporated tax. It's just like, yeah. it's not the business tax, there's just business tax, and this is an extra tax on top of that. Yeah. I, I don't know how they came up with that. And then there's the metro tax, it's actually quite high. Yeah, we it's a lot. a lot. It's a lot. But you know what? We I think we get some good services and quality of life from being in New York. So. Yeah. We'll see. We'll, we like New York. we'll keep this up as long as we can. All right, show and tell. Big night. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six people. All fantastic projects. First yes. one. Richard showed that you want to go through these. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I will go through these. Here, hand me the spritzer, though. Okay. I need spritzer. Thank you. Um, Richard showed up with his uh, combat bot. He has like a combat bot collection. I guess he was at the workshop there. Uh, it's uarobotics.com, and this is some sort of laser control system. They've got like, I, you know, I'm assuming it's a school. Um, robotics lab or something because it's like pretty intense. Like yeah. it's huge. I don't think it's a private robotics lab, but they have all these combat bots and they use like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and Ethernet to control them and it's all microcontroller based um, and other people tend to use computer based and he says he likes microcontrollers. I actually prefer microcontrollers for robotics because um, you know if there's a power problem, which there are in robots a lot, um, yeah. it comes back up really fast. Yeah, I thought it was neat because uh, I've seen a lot of robotic competitions and it's like Oh wow, we haven't like did our security update on our Windows 7 machine, and like Java got updated, and now our thing doesn't work. Like it's like it's always like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, totally. Like so micro con microcontroller um, uh, control is. So I like my controllers. Yeah. All right, next up, William showed up with an LED matrix for his wedding. The wife is picking up flowers. He's building LED matrices. Uh, I guess yeah. I don't know. You can tweet uh, to like pound something, and it will automatically pull. Uh, it uses like a Dewey with the Ethernet Shield, automatically pulls um, the data in and then uh, displays it on this like string and I guess you can string them together, which is kind of cool. Jesse showed up with um, this cool um, game of life, like menu based game of life that he wrote for our 1.8 inch color LCD shield, um, TFT shield, which we put in stock last week because we got more TFTs. Um, it's great and then he did some um, stuff with like one wire as well, he had two projects to show. So he had like a little like mini Arduino with an, a one wire LCD that he's kept around since high school. Uh, next up is Jasmine Sam and she showed up with a uh, power saving strip that uses a photocell to detect when it's light out so it'll turn off um, like a power yeah. switch tail. So it's kind of interesting, it's a, it's a way of reducing power um, by building like a, a smart uh, power outlet which is actually pretty cool. Like, we kind of wish we had that, because, like, what if you forget to turn off your fan or your lights when you leave the house? So it does it automatically. Uh, Ethan showed up, and he had a, a, a Batman phone, dial phone, that he somehow kept around. I've, I've never seen these things, but I imagine it was totally cool and um, uh, struck fear into the hearts of criminals or something, this phone. Yeah. And he uh, modified the keypad from this phone, and uh, he's going to do something cool with it. He doesn't know what. I don't know. It'll be cool. Because it's Batman. Um, next up, uh, Edward showed up and he had an animatronic um, sort of controller based on a Raspberry Pi and he used to work for Showtime Pizza and apparently they had like 
a band that was animatronic robots and I never went to Showtime Pizza so I don't know exactly what this is but it sounds really cool. I would love it if there was robots at every restaurant we went to. Yeah, so th- we talked about this on the show and tell and folks can watch it after it's, it's probably uh, posted right now on our YouTube channel, Adafruit.com, I'm sorry, YouTube.com slash Adafruit. So there was this Chuck E. Cheese Showtime Pizza thing and you would go and you would have a birthday party or you just go and they would sing songs and they were um, robots. And it yeah. was kind of like a more um, approachable or easy to get to uh, Disneyland, but always just restaurant it's a really focused. Small. Yeah, just yeah. restaurant focused. And I think Showtime and Chuck E. Cheese went through their own bankruptcies and all sorts of stuff. But this this idea in the the the, the, the Rock of Fire band um, is one oh, of yeah. them um, is still getting worked on by people out there. And then there's a lot there's a big hobbyist community that that's doing this. I have a, this is my prediction. I think um, as Hacker spaces are getting more advanced, so they got laser cutters, and then some of them are doing um, 3D printing. printing. I think what we're going to see is, I think we're going to see like each hacker space has their own animatronic band. I think they should all, yeah, they should. It should be like the Chuck E. Cheese and hacker space. That would be that would be kind of cool if there's animatronics in every hacker space. I went to um, the House on the Rock in Wisconsin, Mm -hmm. and it's unfortunately most of the animatronics are broken, but it was also like this, you know, house from I think like 20, 30 years ago that was full of like these animatronics and it was very mechanical, right? Yeah. The, the, they, it was like, they kind of like invented reed switches and servos and they went crazy. Yeah. Um, and it, it, you know, unfortunately this stuff broke, all broke, um, it breaks very easily, but it was really neat animatronic stuff. I think like there was this huge phase of animatronics which we just missed out on. Yeah. Like we barely were old enough to, to catch on yeah. to this thing. I, th- I, I think it'll be neat. I think San Francisco and New York are probably the two first candidates for some type of like Robots singing restaurant that's not um, that's more of a maker style more more than just like for kids yeah. um, because uh, kids are super sophisticated now and I don't think they need to see um, you know robots uh, for uh, just kids it's yeah you know adults can enjoy it uh, that being said I'd love to see the circuit playground crew at some type of you know all of our puppets. Uh, Turning into a, a band. You should be a band. Yeah, I think. Cappy will have like bass. Yeah, well, Bill, Billy. Bill's on drums. Well, Billy, she sings. She's modeled after Billy Holiday. She has, she sings the blues. She's a blue LED. I want Gus to be like the roadie. Oh, the roadie. Okay. Yeah. We'll work on it. All right. Okay. Uh, next up. So, oh, is that everybody? Did we That's get everybody? It. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, so everybody on the show and tell will receive the SE on the show and tell sticker. We're also starting to award badges. Yes. So a couple of the folks that were on the, the show were uh, young engineers. So we're sending um, one um, LED and electronics badge to Jazz and then one um, dumpster diving one for Ethan yeah. who saved this Batman phone from the trash and turned it into something That would have been tragic. New. So, all right. Okay. Lady how do people get on the show and tell? Oh, super easy. All you have to do is go to our Google Plus page at plus.google.com slash plus Adafruit and look for the post where I say, hey, come in here and we'll add you to the circle so you can join the show and tell. Comment there. We'll add you to the circle and then you'll get invite at 9.30 Eastern time yeah. uh, every Saturday night. Uh, and you will be able to join in from Google into a Google Hangout. It'll be awesome. And then it gets put on Ustream and it's lovely. And that's all I have to say about it. Yep. Yeah. And... Uh, we're really happy with the results of, uh, of this. More so, spritzer water. So do ch- do check it out. We got a big shipment of this stuff. Yeah, we did. It's all gone. We drank it all. We okay. have uh, the, the the fresh direct delivery um, gets devoured pretty quickly. <laughs> we have a lot of hungry people here and thirsty. All right. They're not starving. It's just it's hard to resist free food. I know yeah. how it is. Well, we like doing it, so we're gonna keep doing it. Okay. Uh, next up, pack of the mailbag. Pack it the mailbag. Yeah, do, 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 we'll, we'll get a song for him. All right, every okay. week people send us letters. We get letters. Here is the letter oh, this week from one. Bobby. Well, okay. I can read it pretty fast. Thank right. you very much, Lady Ada, for Adafruit and LadyAda.net. You're doing an incredible thing by making hardware accessible, empowering for curious minds, and exciting to see something so good is a viable business model. Your libraries and tutorials are phenomenal. Before a few months ago, I mainly written MATLAB, so I'm very much appreciative having commands to do exactly what I want without worrying about parsing, addressing, etc. And the Adafruit libraries always work. I took a peek at the electric knit overview and was very grateful for Becky's disclaimer. Before you begin, look at your life and what choices brought you to this point. I realized I had caught the can-do bug and indeed had no business hacking a knitting machine, maybe someday. 
Thank you for all you do. Sincerely, Bobby. It's true. Before you start hacking a knitting machine, think about, like, why machine. am I doing this? Because it's complicated and hard. It's hard and yeah. also, uh, it might not work out. So. Well, we almost, like, frazzed the knitting machine, like, twice. And that was, like, really horrifying. I was like, oh, my God, we broke yeah. this knitting machine, and they're no longer made. But we did get it working, and uh, it's still here. Yeah. Working. Okay. Knitting away. All right, anyways, but uh, don't be afraid to uh, yeah. knit up. Next up, Adafruit Learning System. Kapow! Kapow is doing a lot of Kapow. stuff. So we're almost done migrating all the LadyAda.net tutorials. To, and I had time this week. Yeah, to uh, <laughs> learn.adafruit.com. Yes. Um, what we think is the best place online to learn mm -hmm. electronics and more. Um, from wearables to uh, business stuff. We put a little bit of everything in there. Yeah. So um, we're putting in some oldie but goodies. So if you like uh, to see Lamore and I from like 2009, we did a uh, open source non-lethal weapons project. The best part about this um, project is this logo. This is, <laughs> this is like the best thing I've ever seen. Yeah. So Every time we make a logo with the tux penguin, there's just something hilarious about it. It's funny when you put a penguin on, on top Jeez, of another logo. So yeah, funny. when we hacked the connect. We had the connect on top of the penguin's head. That was really funny. And too. then this one, what we did is um, we found a the patent for this um, vomiting flashlight. So the Department of Homeland Security uh, paid a lot of money for a company to develop a flashlight. When you shine it at people, they throw up. You know, crowd control and which doesn't really work. You know, when your citizens get a little, you know, uppity. A little uppity. They, they decide they want to, you know, I don't know. Protest. Protest, or maybe they're getting out of control. They want to have free speech or non-free speech zone. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> who knows why people would want to make these things? Yeah. So we thought, wow, this looks like a pretty neat idea. We could probably make it for cheaper. So um, that tutorial is in there. You can build one of these yourself. Um, I got some freely from a friend of mine who worked at LED Startup. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it doesn't really, for some people it makes them dizzy and nauseous. Um, we made it into a rave toy. Um, if you're really interested... I still have it over there. I, mean, I can, I can yeah, it, it over. Yeah, um, it is. Uh, it's not powered, um, but, uh, you know... Maybe one day. Yeah, we have it over there. All right. Um, but, uh, Maybe when it, when it rolls around for um, Time Travel Tuesday, Yeah. I'll bring it out. So that's one of the projects. The other one was uh, Game Girl. Maybe you can tell everybody about this. This is this is like one of the first tutorials I did, which was um, making a portable NES. And at the time, a lot of people had been making portable NESs, but they were not easy to build. And this was actually one of the first really easy to build um, portable Nintendos. I basically took like a like a controller that you plug into the TV. It was just a kind of like crummy knockoff Nintendo thing you just plug into a TV and I and they were on sale at the local mall. So I got one and a Nintendo controller and then um, I took apart like this portable TV and um, I kind of shoved it all together and actually kind of worked. Um, it's actually something that I might want to try rebuilding because now we carry much nicer TFTs that don't have an EL backlight, they have an LED backlight, so it'll last a lot longer. Yeah, so the batteries are dead on this, but this is the bedazzler. We can, we can plug in this battery maybe. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. We didn't talk about this before. I know. Show, we, but, uh, I didn't even think of it because I forgot about it. Yeah. So, Can I let up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, try. Yeah. Pff, yeah. Talk about it doesn't work. We talked right. about sorry it. Totally works. Sorry, everybody at home who... um. And then you could switch modes. Oh, yeah. yeah that's so basically, this will um, make you... Oh, yeah, you know what? I better not do that. Someone might... Um, <laughs> if they have any... Uh, if they have epilepsy, I, don't, I actually think they could get... Yeah, um, don't watch the yeah, show. Don't watch, I should have put the warning. <laughs> okay. Warning. Yeah. Well, you know what? Well, no, this is fun. So. <laughs> you can point at me. What? No, you I'm not going to point. This is very close. I'm not going to do that. And you can point and at this And this is rave mode. Rave mode is fine. So you can point, yeah, point it, it to the, the side. side so you can yeah, it is yeah. bright. Well, the lead acid battery inside um, lasts yeah. a really long time. There's a there's a club downstairs we can. Yeah, we can bring this to. Uh, the yeah, but anyways. Um, I'm really glad that this still works. We should. Uh, yeah. Here, leave the battery in there. I'll okay. Just, I'll just leave it in there. Oh, let me turn it off though. It is off. I just. Oh, you turn it off. Yeah. Then. So let's right. leave so that we'll there. So we'll go out tonight in New York City and see what. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, we built that um, a long time. We built that for um, Gadget Off, and uh, that was a fun project. Back when I had like time to spend like ten hours on a stupid project like that. Yeah. But um, okay. Anyways, so we built the uh, vomiting flashlights. Anyways, so the game girl was this little g control. We might, I might want to rebuild that project. Yeah. Cause it'll be a fun project to rebuild. Okay. Um, so next up, um, some updates in the learn system. So uh, a few things. First up, um, yeah, we have a footer and we have um, some helpful things at the bottom of learn.adafruit.com. It has, I think, one of the most important pieces of information. We have 208 tutorials. 208 tutorials. And that's dynamic. And counting. That means every time we put a new one, yeah. you'll see it. Okay, when we get to 255, we'll have a little party. 
Yeah. We're all over party. Yeah. Uh, next up, um, where the where you're at in the categories, um, that's where uh, it, it displays now. Yeah, we have the little um, breadcrumbs. Yeah. At the top, because that's oftentimes we try to intelligently like guess what other tutorials might be interested in. But we do have categories, and so now you can like go to all the floor tutorials. You know what I mean. So any project that has a floor in it, you'll yeah. you'll see it. And then also we have um, the time last updated um, timestamps at the bottom, uh, which is kind of a nice way to do versioning. And then instead of it just saying next and back, it says the name of what you're about to go to. And then in the back end, it does a full versioning system, so we can like roll back if we ever have to. Like yeah. it has, it keeps diffs. This is one of the things that I wanted to have in this because yeah. it's rare, but sometimes you're like, uh oh, I deleted something, and like it's just basically like a backup system. Yeah. I've never had a problem though because the, the editor we have is like really cool and dynamic. It's hard to actually delete content by accident. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, our weekly feature that we like to do looking at the Maker World Time Travel Tuesday. Let's go back in time. Back in time. Back in time. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up. Yeah. <laughs> so in 2010, we were etching iPads. This, I like this guy. This guy came by twice. Yeah. Once for his laptop, and he was like the first person we ever etched. Yeah, this guy had every like Apple thing, and he kept etching the toasters on everything um, that he came out. He was this toaster guy. I don't remember yeah. his name, but he was he was bitmap toaster guy. Yeah. And that was his thing. He just loved these flying toasters. Yeah. Next up. What ever happened to After Dark, anyways? And this, did they like get bought by some other company? I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't been keeping up on my After Dark trivia. <laughs> Does anyone use screensavers anymore? Is a popular no, thing? No, we don't need them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next up, um, and I'm gonna just skip because well, we, we're gonna move the the, the show right along. Um, back in 2005, um, this was one of my favorite projects. This was like the the homemade Game Boy. Oh yeah, this was cute. Yeah, this was neat. And had little like serial ports sticking out the side. Yeah, and yeah, then cool. uh, next up, um, we're gonna go way back in time. In 1994, the first commercial spam was sent out April 12th, 1994, by Lawrence. Uh, Cantor, who is trying to drum up business for his Arizona yeah, law firm. Yeah, Cantor and Siegel, that's uh, like old school. Yeah, whew, can you imagine? I remember old... when like Usenet was like livid. Yeah. Livid, so, I mean, the entire thing like blew up over um, the Cantor and Siegel green yeah. card yeah. Uh, emails. Yeah. It's they, pretty, it's pretty amazing invented. that like, you know, spam is just a thing. And like, because the internet is so great and we love email so much, like we kind of all care, but not really. It's just like we oh, it's spam. It. Yeah, it's like spam. We uh, put up with it because it's yeah. it's it's pretty useful otherwise. Yeah, all of human knowledge available in like one second, so we do. The spam good. filters are pretty good. They're getting there. I mean, I still get spam no matter what. I get thousands of emails a day, so there's no way that I. And could... yeah, you like support at Adafruit comes like on every everything everywhere. Yeah, like. so it, and it comes into our support system, but it actually works out pretty well. We don't have a lot of um, uh, false positives. Yeah. It's, it's good. Um, next up, this is. Uh, J. Presper Eckert, inventor of the electronic numerical integrator and computer, otherwise known as the first all-purpose electronic computer, the ENIAC, right? ENIAC. ENIAC. Um, dubbed the giant brain by newspapers at its time. Several vacuum tubes failed daily, so basically half the time it wasn't working, but it was used for nearly a decade and then uh, retired out in 1955. Okay. Not bad. First computer, basically. Uh, one of the first ones. Um, 1633. April 12th, Galileo's second trial for his heliocentric beliefs. Do you know what heliocentric is, Lydia? Of course you do. Yeah. What? Do you know what it is? Yes, the sun is in the center. Heliocentric. And then uh, what's the what's geocentric? That means the earth is in the center. That's very good. Okay. Uh, he, Yay! He was found guilty and spent the remainder <laughs> of his life under house arrest. No! Yeah, but, but when he was under house arrest, that's when he considered his uh, best work, two sciences, which formed the groundwork for kinematics and the strength of materials. All right. Yeah. Well, not, not that I suggest anyone go to jail for creativity yeah. reasons, but I guess it worked For the out. most part, during um, the big growth phase at Adafruit, we were under house arrest. We never left. <laughs> yeah, but it was voluntary. Yeah, well, you know. You can get a lot done working at home. That's true. All right. Well, yeah, but back then, you didn't have, like, a Blackberry or an iPhone. No, I think they only had those Nokias back yeah. then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Flip flops? Yeah. The StarTax. They only had the StarTax. Okay. Yeah. Next up. Okay. Flora News. Next, uh, uh, well, uh, Wearable, Wearable Wednesday, Wednesday and uh, we, we show Sue a few things. Um, so Wearable Wednesday is our day where we celebrate all things in wearables. Wearables is kind of neat right now because uh, Google Glass is out, and um, there's a lot of people getting excited about wearables. They're using a lot of our stuff. Um, this came in through Twitter. Someone is using a, a light sensor with our NeoPixels. That's kind of neat. And then um, uh, Becky and Rissa in our wearables group this week did a really neat video um, and this isn't exactly wearable, but it's using our ITO and material stuff, so I'm putting in wearable Wednesday. And uh, 
when you put these origami shapes, um, which is why we have to code origami, when you put these shapes on ITO, which mm -hmm. is a conductive material that's split in the middle and you have power and ground, it'll light up. So yeah. uh, let's watch the video. Hey everybody, today we're going to show you a really fun project here at Adafruit, it's LED origami. Uh, we're going to show you how to make this light up LED frog and a lotus flower with an LED in the center. And Riss is going to help us. All you'll need is LEDs, copper tape, and origami paper. To make the lotus flower, start with a square of origami paper and fold it in half diagonally to make a triangle. Then unfold and repeat in the other direction. When you open it back up, you should have creases in the shape of the letter X. This X reveals the center point of the paper. So next, fold each corner to that center point and crease your folds with a hard tool like a bone fold or the handle of your scissors. Next up, just do that all over again. Take the new corners and fold them to meet the center point, creasing your folds as you go. Okay, one more time. For a third round, take the corners, bring them to the center point, and crease your folds. Then flip the whole thing over and fold each corner up just a little bit, about a third of the way to the center. It doesn't have to be precise, just try to keep them consistent. Flip it back over and start peeling back the petals. You'll take them from the center towards the outer edge and around to the front of the flower, kind of like peeling off a pair of socks. Do this for all four petals in the first layer and then repeat with the second layer of petals that are now exposed. This is the trickiest part of the whole flower because the petals tend to want to rip at the edges, so be extra careful and practice a lot. You'll be a pro in no time, having more lotus flowers than you know what to do with. And finally, peel back the final layer of petals exposing the other side of the paper at the very bottom of the lotus, and this will also make the center of the flower only one layer of paper thick, which will make it easy to install our LED later. But first, let's learn how to make the origami frog. Start with a large square and fold in half to make a rectangle. Then take one of the corners and fold it up to meet that center crease. This makes a long skinny triangle that's bisected and half patterned and half colored on the paper we're using. Repeat this on the other side. Leave this side folded and then fold over one more time so that the new lower right hand corner meets up with the left hand side. Then unfold and repeat on the other side. Now you've got sets of radiating folds that'll help you form the basic shape of the frog. Invert these middle folds as shown and then bring those folds to the center line, collapsing the form like this with a triangle towards the top. Then fold one of the flaps over to the left, then back up on itself so the bottom edge now aligns with the center line. Then make a valley fold in the triangle that joins the outer end of the flap to the body so that the whole flap is folded upon itself. Repeat the whole process on the other side. Fold it up to meet itself, then crease the middle triangle to flatten it out. Open up one of the flaps and bring long edges together to make a crease. Then use this crease to invert a small section of paper that helps sort of splay the arms apart from each other. Fold the flaps back out flat as shown. To form the front legs, uh, fold any remaining uh, back side of the paper you see in half along the length of the front leg, and then compensate for that fold by opening up more of that other side of the paper lower down in the frog. Next, make the front arms a bit skinnier by folding them in half lengthwise, and then you can even take each half of the leg and fold it in half to make the legs even skinnier. Further shape the front legs of the frogs by making small inversions. Then start the back legs by folding up these little flaps of paper that we're showing, and then folding up the entire back end of the frog about a third of the way up the body. Make a crease, and then fold the legs over towards the center of the body. This angle doesn't have to be precise, but try to be consistent on both sides. Then fold the leg back out to where it was with another fold that's parallel to the one you just made, and you're done. This is a perfectly fine frog. If you'd like to add a little extra bounce, unfold the rear feet and fold the whole frog in half at the center back. Then fold the body to one side to make a diagonal crease, open it back up and refold the feet, except now you have this crease at the center back that you can use to make the frog into like a dome shape. And then on the inside of the frog, you use the way the legs are folded to secure that new crease you just made at the back of the frog. Now it's finally time to add the LEDs. Just sandwich the leads of an LED around a battery until it lights up 
and tape it inside the frog. Adding an LED to the flower is just as simple. Just pierce it through the center of the flower and you can reinforce the paper with a little bit of tape if you'd like. And then bend the leads over to one side and attach the battery with tape. If you skip the battery, you can actually use a piece of ITO, it's like conductive clear plastic, to make a lily pond for your flower and your frog. Score a line down the middle to create a positive and negative side, hook it up to a battery pack, and just splay your leads of your LED out to touch either side. You can add LEDs to almost any origami form, so I look forward to seeing yours on our weekly show and tell on Google+. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. All right. All right. And that was uh, Wearable Wednesday. And I can I can even demo this. Yeah, we have one here. Yeah, I can try to show this off. Yeah, this is using our new materials that we have in our materials section, adafruit.com slash materials. Yeah, do you want to go to the overhead? I'm going to go to the overhead. Okay, so this is a piece of the ITO. And um, let's get this over here. There's a line down the center where the ITO has been sort of cut. And then it's, oh, there you go. Yeah. You can... Um, have the LEDs on the bottom, which are kind of bent up a little bit, um, touch the two pieces yeah. of ITO and they light up. And then there's also a red one. What does ITO stand for, Lady Ada? Um, ITO stands for uh, indium tin oxide, so it's a clear conductive material. So it's kind of neat because, you know, I can, I can it on here and it's it's flexible and translucent but you know when you put an led on it it lights up yeah. so i thought it'd be kind of interesting material to play with yeah it's cool stuff let's keep moving on um you know so that's why the code is origami this week yes okay uh next up 3d thursday where we look at the world of 3d printing um for the folks who signed up for the uh, MakerBot Adafruit edition. Yes. We're getting more in uh, next week. They're going to probably go fast. Um, yeah, then we're going to sure. order more. Um, this has been a neat experiment for us. Um, we'll keep doing this. But um, do uh, sign up on the page. Search for MakerBot on the. Yeah. The, uh, we're going to notify everybody when we get the next yeah. batch of 10, and it might they might go fast. Yeah, the so. reason why this is a, is a good deal is you get a Raspberry Pi, you get a Times Square watch, you get a Minty Boost. And uh, it's a limited edition uh, plate that has the Adafruit logo, MakerBot yeah. logo. And you get it immediately. And you get it immediately, because we only ship stuff we have here. Yeah. So if you're ever thinking about a MakerBot and you're going to get some of the other, this other electronics anyways, it's a good deal. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, big news in um, the world of uh, 3D, I think. Yeah, this is, a, this is really cool. Um, this was uh, the GitHub news. Yeah, this is GitHub can now view STL files and you can, I think, look at the changes uh, between them because it's GitHub. And someone's already like doing a GitHub verse, a Thingiverse thing. So um, it is on. That's neat. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of hoping they would eventually be able to render like schematics and board files from Eagle, but I think that's a little hard. One thing is that they could, they um, were not able to do DXFs. I think I, I think I put in a request that they would be yeah. able to visualize DXFs or DWGs. But I don't know if that's, I don't think they did that. I think it's just STLs. Yeah. What's kind of neat is uh, we just did a show and tell with nine people from around the world over like HD video. Um, we're sitting here in an electronics factory in New York City. We're uh, broadcasting live. Um, we have 3D printers that are low cost. And this kind of looks like a scene out of Max Hedrum. Yeah. Um, it's kind of neat. Not not bad. And we're doing this it's a pretty future. hacker hacker live video and there's, show there's three um 3d stores in new york <laughs> there's three 3d retail stores yeah in new york so I think there's three. what a what a weird bizarro world yeah, that we bizarre. uh, uh folks who saw the movie or sorry tv show sliders we're in the uh the, we're in the pretty good universe right now okay not bad um cool stuff okay, okay. moving right along yeah next up pi day that's my favorite day of the week. It's a fun day of the week because there's so much Raspberry Pi stuff going on right now that, um, and this is kind of turning into a thing where other sites are also doing Pi Day, which is making our job easier because then we can just link to this. <laughs> um, we have, I just have one thing because we're going to okay. get to new products. Um, this is uh, Paint Your Dragon. Phil. Yeah. He has, I a think, great tutorial. one of the best um, Pi projects I've ever seen. So we have a video. Let's see this grimy video. Watch this video. Hi, here's a Raspberry Pi project to try. Internet streaming music, an endless supply. It's a Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi Hi-Fi. We call it Pi-Fi. 
Start with a free account on Pandora.com, then set up some favorite stations. Snap your Raspberry Pi in a case, then add storage and a wireless adapter. Our LCD plate is a kit you solder together. We have tutorials to help. Set up the network and load some software. Add powered speakers and enjoy your music in any room. That's right. a lovely video. Yeah, cool project. I like the video. It's short but sweet. Yeah. Gets the point. Okay. So it shows um, this new thing that you can do, and we have one. We'll, we'll get to it um, in a bit. Um, do you want to do the new products and go back and look at this? No, let's actually show this now. So we have a variation. Um, yes. Uh, I'm looking at our, what we're doing on time here. Yeah, we should show that now. So we yeah, have so a variation. This is a of it. acrylic cutout version. Yeah. Which you can so see. So Raspberry Pi Boombox, a Pi Fi. This is a Pi Fi. Yeah. And um, it uses the. Um, LCD, we use the blue and white one because I wanted to make sure it works with the blue and white. Two of our uh, new three watt forum speakers, you can see the phi symbol here. This nice yeah. visual symbol there. Yeah, Phil always has these nice touches. There's this um, Raspberry Pi in the back. Um, this is a little breadboard that we just use for power distribution, but I'm probably going to replace that. And then um, one of our uh, stereo Class D amplifiers. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's running the code. You, you so can turn you, it on, but just only do it for like five seconds because it'll have commercial music on it, and like YouTube will shut us down, and we'll, we'll have get to we'll go to jail again um, for playing music I on know, YouTube. I know, but we'll yeah. be very creative yeah. in jail. We'll be okay. under house arrest, and we'll have to do this stuff. Okay. Yeah. So just play it. Just play it for. A... Okay. 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 That's, that's it. it. That's all you get. Yeah. Um, ours only plays uh, gothy sad music, but yeah. uh, apparently there's other channels. The too. only thing I have to do is I, st I didn't replace this with the really tall buttons, so I have to use a screwdriver to push the buttons, but I'm going to replace these buttons with extra tall ones so that I can push yeah. them. But this one, I just finished this today, so that's pretty good. And yeah. then I, I want to um, put this in my workroom and I'm going to listen to um, the Pesh Mode Radio. So it's, it's running Pandora, but yeah. you know, there's, um, there's clients for other. Um, radio streaming services too. So you know, if you don't have a Pandora account, there's other things yeah. you can do. You can do like yeah. AirPlay. You can do RDO. You can do whatever you want. You can yeah. just actually just play MP3 streams too. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, before we go to new products, it's uh, origami. origami as a code, ten percent off everything in stock in the Adafruit store. All the stuff you could use to build one of these. Um, let's go on to new products later. Okay. It's new product time. Okay. First up. Go go go. One new of the products. most anticipated products. Of the year, nine volt. <laughs> it's a nine dun, volt battery. Dun, dun. It's a nine volt battery. It's a nine volt battery. But yeah. you know what? People were asking us to carry nine volts because we have some stuff that uses nine volt batteries in yeah. the store, and um, they're like, "Well, we want to be able to get, you know, like we, we want to place one order and get the battery with it." And I'm like, "Uh, yeah, okay, fine." So we now carry these nice Duracell batteries. Uh, yeah. John Janier took like the nicest photo of it, a nine volt possible. There is a, That's a photo, not a render. And in, in, yeah, in Google Plus, there is this giant uh, discussion about the batteries and the photo, and it just turned into this thing. There are more conversations about this than like other stuff. This is a lovely photo, though. Yeah. And it's a lovely battery. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, next up. Issue my cable. Micro issue my cable. Yeah, I'll show this on the overhead. Although um, the photos are also very good, showing the ends. So they have a big HDMI connector, standard HDMI on the left, and then a micro HDMI on the right. Um, and this is used for some phones and cameras and stuff, which have a micro HDMI connector. Also, the BeagleBone, which has HDMI, uses a micro HDMI connector. So let me just show on the overhead, and we'll show what the micro HDMI connector looks like and how you plug it in, Sure. just to prove it. So this is a, a new Beagle Bone. Shh, not everyone has one, but we do. Because we're special. I don't know. No, because they gave us one. Um, to make sure all of our accessories work with it. And um, this is, it looks like a USB connector, but it's actually not. It's a HDMI connector. And then you just plug this in. It's actually a pretty nice solid connection. It feels a little bit like a, like a mini B-Jack, but it's nice and solid. And then on the other end, you get HDMI. So yeah. we will make sure that this works with all HDMI stuff. We just got these cables in. Okay. That's it. Next up. This is the... Modella. Yeah, this is the um, Model A version of the Pibo case. Yeah. And um, the Model A will be coming out soon in the U.S. I think they're, uh, they're, they're sort of getting sold. But yeah. now there's a case for it. And we've got the cases. We don't have the Model A yet. We will. Um, it'll be, you know, limited limited edition um, because 
uh, there's not <laughs> there's not a lot of pies it seems. Yeah. So All you right. want to go to the overhead? Or? Yeah, I'm trying to adjust this uh, this lighting just a tad so I can because I want to show this in detail. Okay. But um, really beautiful case once again. Yeah, let me show the details because it's, it's kind of interesting that they, they did some different stuff with this case. Um, this case is actually mounted on the VESA. I put the VESA mount on the bottom, so we'll talk about that shortly. But it's it's actually quite short. And what's nice is that like the GPIO cables can plug in right on top. Um, it's got slots for the camera. And it's got a little camera symbol, which is really cute. Um, there's only one USB port. There's like this magic blue smoke pop. I guess if you plug in or like somehow really mess up the power, um, you get a magic blue smoke pop. Um, and what's really nice is on the bottom, they made the uh, the case compatible with our um, low profile SD yeah. card adapter. So this case absolutely definitely works with our low profile SD card adapter um, for those who want a uh, lower profile SD. Um, yeah, it's only like six layers. And then the bottom layer, uh, do you want to quickly skip ahead and then we'll... Yeah. We'll come um, back. The so bottom layer is the Visa adapter. Yeah, so we can go to this one. This one and the previous one. Yeah. yeah. So this allows you to attach your Pi Bow case, any Pi Bow case, to a uh, VESA compatible monitor, either a 75 millimeter or 100 millimeter spacing. Uh, this monitor only has like two mounting holes, so it's only mounted in two places, but you know, most monitors have four, so you can attach it there and then you can run a cable or, you know, it's really nice, kind of cute, good for if you're making a media center or something. Um, it's pretty straightforward. What I really think is, is cool about it is you just replace it only a couple bucks and you replace the bottom plate of your Pi Bell. So it's very easy. Okay. And uh, next up. Embed app board. Yeah. Go embed app board. Um, embed app board, I did not have time to upload a demo app, but I will show off everything that is on the demo app board. Um, so embeds are really cool. One of the cool things about them is they have a lot of pins. They have Ethernet capability and they have USB capability, but that, that capability isn't brought out in the, um, in the embed itself. So what this board does is it kind of brings out like the best of the best of what is available um, for the embed uh, out to like all these pins. So you can do like audio and you know graphical LCD and Ethernet and USB and because the um, I'm trying to think it's the LPC uh, 1769 I believe it has like 64k of flash so you can actually do quite a bit with it it's quite, it's quite a powerful processor do you want to show the overhead and I'll point yeah, out all the little things let's point out all the little things okay so uh, this hey, is have it uh, hello refocus I'm trying focus damn you yeah, bring it closer to the camera. There you go. There you go. Sometimes you have to put my hand in front because yeah. it's uh, confused. So this is an Ethernet jack with magnetics. This is a USB host jack. It's upright style. Um, this is like an XB socket. Um, and is there this, Wi-Fi in there too? There's no Wi-Fi, just Ethernet. Okay. Are you sure? Because there's a little, it says a little, you can put it on there, right? Where? With, you can put the uh, the XB. There's a, a thing on the back. You can you can put a Wi-Fi yeah. XB compatible here called the RN XB, which um, is kind of like the bane uh, Wi-Fi, but you, it, it does sort of kind of work. Uh, there's an RGB LCD. I think these are two servo ports, if I recall. Yeah, these are two servo ports, but you can use general PWM. There's a temperature sensor. Um, there is a USB device. There's audio in, audio out, a buzzer, uh, a DC in, so you can use a, like a um, five volt, uh, it's a small DC connector, not a, a 2.1 millimeter, it's a, like a 1.4. Um, and then a little graphical 128 by 32 pixel monochrome LCD, and a little um, four way joystick with, I think it has select as well. And then yeah, on the bottom, there's this really nice diagram of all the stuff you can do, accelerometer, temperature, um, XB or Wi-Fi, joystick, analog in, analog out, LCD, um, PWM, DC in, yeah, it kind of has everything. I mean, this is everything you kind of ever want. So, yeah, and you just plug in your um, embed like this, like so. And what's another nice thing is they did is they put in the pins double style. 
so there, it's a double header so you can still connect to the pins with like a jumper wire or something yeah if you want Yeah, so you can sort of see it. Anyways, if that's all. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little conflicted about these type of boards. I'll tell you why. I have an opinion about this. You have an opinion? I have an opinion about this. Okay. So, it's a really neat board, but one of the things that, I, and I'm, it's, I'm glad it's out now, but it's one of those boards that I remember right before the Arduino came out, these, the chip companies, because this is from ARM, would make these dev boards with like a lot of stuff on it. And yeah, but for, they were huge. This is compact. No, this is compact. I like um, this, actually. But, um... Um, beginners get intimidated by these, yeah. With because it has it has so much stuff on it, it kind of does everything. Yeah. So that's the only thing. Do, and this is my question for you. This is my well, my my opinion is, um, I think that unless there's a, a, an easy way to go from simple to hard with this stuff, um, those big dev boards, those days are over. I actually think it's more about like kind of simpler boards. Yeah. Um, this is a I, I like this one a little bit more because um, you could start out with uh, an embed and kind of grow up with doing more stuff with it mm -hmm. later. But, um, for, so my question to you is, who, who would want, what type of customer, what type of person is gonna use something that has all of this on it? Well, I don't think that they're gonna use all of it, but um, it's a pretty good value. So, you know, ethernet is a really common thing, yeah. and an RGB LED is always, always really handy. And then um, the joystick is good for input. So it kind of has a little bit of everything. What, yeah. what I, drove me crazy about a lot of dev boards is they were like enormous and they had- Yeah, they were like, they this, had it like was a 16, PC. They had like 16 LEDs and like yeah. joysticks. Those are the ones, just to be clear, I like this. I don't like the crazy ones that these chip companies used to make because they did yeah. absolutely everything. Think, they were like thousands one, of dollars. This one, is, it is a little bit expensive. Um, it's like $60 and, and with, a, with an, an embed, it's like a hundred plus dollars. So it is, it's not, a low cost uh, breakout, but I think you get a lot for it. I mean, the, adding the Ethernet and the LCD, and like a buzzer and the XB socket. I mean, you get this, and this will kind of take you really far. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm kind of into it. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautifully designed dev board. I usually yeah. do not carry dev boards. I know. This one's I set nice you. I set you up for this. I mean, basically, because we don't carry everything. We could. Adafruit yeah. has like 1,300 products. We don't carry everything. We only carry <laughs> stuff that. You, Lady Ada, personally choose to put in, and we don't have these giant dev board platforms that does everything that it w was designed by a committee. Oh no, we should have a PA though. Yeah, like oh, I no. had, like I have an STK 500 from like I got like a decade yeah. ago, but like I never used it for anything but like programming chips. And then I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I can just use a USB teeny and a breadboard. Yeah. So um, an ARM uh, or an embed and the uh, application board, um, I think it's like all together 100 bucks. It's like 110, I think. Yeah, not bad. But with it a discount is, code. It is, yeah, it's somehow, <laughs> but it, it is very powerful, and I, I do like the thing. That, the thing I like about it is it's small, but it does include just about everything. Yeah. Um, and that I think does, does make it worth yeah. it to me. But it doesn't, like, it doesn't have like six, seven segment displays, yeah, like and this. like. Like four potentiometers. There's just like one. There's just one of everything, and yeah. that I think is actually kind of nice. And the thing it's it's nice about it is it's it it um it extends all the usable functionality like sometimes dev boards are showing off stuff that you'd like never use like they're like oh yeah. this has a built-in like like can bus you know driver so we're going to add like can bus connectors like well yeah. not every project needs that and actually it's, it's not that often that yeah. hobbyist projects use all these things so they actually focused on stuff that hobbyists tend to use yeah. like lcds ethernet wi-fi yeah okay well that's good because if someone asks why, why are you carrying this dev board lady in it and not the other ones. Yeah. Now I, I can now I can send them a link for okay. the time code in this thing. Um, next up, uh, that is it. Oh, okay. Yep. New product. Yeah, it was a little short new product. Next week is exciting. Yeah. But this week is a little That's bit. new products. It's a over. little bit chill. Okay. So uh, real quick, anything you saw there that we have in stock code is origami, ten percent off all the things that you saw in stock and things that are just on our store, datafruit.com. Um, next next up, week it'll be uh, all the products are going to be totally yeah. hot and totally cold. At the same time. Hot and cold? They're going to be hot and cold. The cold side of the products will be cold and the hot side will be hot. Yeah. And so the cool, hot side this cool side. Cool and hot. Cool side this side. Yeah. Warm in the middle or just no? Hot and cold. Nothing in between. Diodes in the middle. Diodes in the middle. Okay. Uh, next up, quick little top secret thing, which isn't really top secret, but um, here's a preview. Paint Your Dragon, Phil B, working on this. That's not a render This either. is the Ada 9000, uses our big red button. Um, I think he's going to work on a little tutorial or something like that, just a little quickie. Um, kind of uh, funny today, um, so we were completely exhausted, and uh, we watched uh, 2001, 
Yeah. And then some of 2010. Excellent movies to take naps to because um, there's some of the parts are boring. Well, 2001 has like no dialogue. Yeah, 2001 is a it's just a, a classic movie. a fantastic movie, only because it's fun to imagine what most people thought when they saw it in the movie theaters back in like the 60s. Yeah, early 70s. Early 70s. It must have been like what? So the people who weren't into the book and didn't know about it, like what did I just see? It's, what just happened? Even even I'm like to this day, I'm like, what am I watching? Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Um, and we watched 2010. Yeah, 2010. Which has your favorite um, line of any movie? Yeah, yeah. All these uh, uh, worlds are yours except for Europa. Attempt no landing there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm paraphrasing it, but it means a lot in different contexts too, which is a lot of fun. Basically, you know. Here's some great stuff. Be nice. Don't mess with this other thing, though. Don't mess with the place where where life is evolving. <laughs> Don't mess with this other thing. All right. So that's our that's the project. So uh, maybe Phil will cook this up. That'll be kind of neat. Okay. Um, real quick. Uh, it, this isn't the do not. It's not in the, not out yet. Don't ask. But uh, I wanted you to show the uh, the the. Uh, oh, actually, we'll hold it up. So this is. So for the folks who've um, knew, out, feeder. knew about our previous pick and place, we had feeders that we showed off. But this is the new feeder. These are mega feeders. For the for the Samsung, Ben. Um, maybe you can talk about this just okay. a little bit. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, this is an eight millimeter feeder. Yeah. These are kind of uh, works of art. These are really, this is really beautiful. Yeah. So what's interesting about these feeders is there is no, from what I can tell, there is no. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's no pickup wheel, which I really like. Yeah. So um, the feeder comes in here. And then there's a little knife, and the knife pulls the cover tape off, and the cover tape just kind of, I think it goes through here or somewhere, and it just like flops out, yeah. and it, um, it doesn't get picked up, uh, which is really nice. You don't have to, like, because that's usually a pain, like it, like with our feeders now, mm -hmm. like if you, you have to clear out the, the, the pickup tape every time. Um, there's a hydraulic, um, and the hydraulic connector is down here, there's a hydraulic um, incrementer for the, um, yeah. for the, uh, yeah, for the feeder. So every time you do this, it's incrementing one, like dot, whatever hole, yeah, thing, two millimeters. How much do you think these feeders cost each? These are six hundred dollars. Six hundred bucks a feeder. Um, yes, yeah, so it's hydraulic, but the feedback loop is electronic. So this is an electric. I think you can see it better on the other side. Yeah. So the, the, the feeder, this, this part, which I'm just manually operating, this is a hydraulic um, uh, clicker. But then if you look here, there's a photo interrupt. And so it knows if um, it actually incremented. And it'll give you feedback. Because if, yeah. you know, if you lose pressure or something, you don't want the pick and place to keep going, even though it hasn't uh, incremented. Yeah. So or indexed. That's the word. Yeah, beautifully milled. Gorgeous yeah, this is a beautifully thing. milled it thing. It is really nice. So I can't wait to actually uh, load it up. We start training next week. <laughs> yeah. I actually haven't even started loading up a uh, a feeder in there, but yeah. I'm sure I'll get really good at it. Yeah. Um, but the thing I like about it is they're really fast. So um, these feeders, and they're similar to the, the my data feeders in which you know you can you can load the feeders quite fast. I mean, yeah. you still have to like remove it. But um, I think you could probably change out the feeder. Like the feeders we have now, they take like two to three minutes, maybe five minutes to change out. The big ones take five minutes. Yeah, and then in yeah. addition to... Um, um, but these I think are less yeah. than a minute. In addition to having the, um, the, the, the LED lighting setup and everything, we will have a camera. It will have its own show. It will take a little bit. There will be googly eyes, probably not. Um, if, we, if anyone <laughs> knows where to get googly eyes this big. Yeah, I don't think I want to. This might need to be more like um, Hal. Maybe this will be. No, after training's over, it's getting like it's getting like it's getting six inch googly eyes, okay. but they need to be this big. Yeah. And I don't know, but I don't know where you get them. Like I, I googled around. They're Google for googly. <laughs> Google's for googly. I googled for them. Okay. Well, um, we have a, a, just a couple of minutes for uh, general questions, so let's okay. do that. Um, type up your engineering questions in the chat. Yeah. And we'll get to them as fast as possible. Okay. Cool. Um, Lady Ada, get ready for your speed round. Yeah. One second. Okay. I was gonna look for a feeder to maybe load this feeder. In. You wanna? I don't yeah. think we should load a feeder now. You might have to no, be answering questions. No, I want to do it while we're while we're asking. Yeah, because people have questions. Take some minutes. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I, Good questions. I can go. I yeah. Can, I can go and go on the overhead when you do that. No, no, you no. You want to do it the overhead? No, I'm just okay. Have you ever uh, given or considered giving factory tours? Uh, 
we con considered it, um, we can't really do that. Right now, we're kind of still rearranging the office a bit. Um, for uh, people that we work with or partners, uh, they can visit. But uh, we're a small team, and we really can't have public tours. Also, the uh, building management property, they before we uh, got this lease, they wanted to make sure that we would not have visitors, not have retail. In fact, this is a manufacturing space, so we can't have outside folks. For uh, very special, uh, well in advance, and um, uh, folks that we, we work with, we do, we do try to do that. But even uh, then, it's kind of hard. And then so, some days, because everyone wants to talk to Lady Ada, and they want to do stuff, and we're still kind of a small team with uh, only a few of us able to get some of the stuff done. So it's just really hard. Maybe one day, as we grow the company, um, I hope to do something. But with the modern marvels of uh, uh, HD broadcasting, you guys can be here. You're this. basically this here. Is, this is way more scalable. We also don't we live. also don't travel anymore. We don't figuring, talk at conferences um, that often because it's easier and, and I think better um, for us to do a show and record it and then it's broadcast and played back at any time. Um, where conferences, it doesn't always work out that well. And you can kind of meet more people this way. Okay. Okay. I think I loaded it. Okay. I think that was it. Uh, next up. Uh, uh, I'm going to do a couple uh, speed rounds. Yeah, sure. Uh, where can I buy the material used on the soil sensor at the bottom pr pr to protect electronics? What can I use at the what? The soil sensor. There's some material on the bottom of it. I guess it's a meshy. Oh, it's, it's sintered metal. I don't I don't think you can just buy it. Mm, maybe we'll look that up there. That'd be interesting to find. Yeah. Could Ada fr fruit stock more 74 dot dot chip, TTL chips? Uh, I thought about it, but you know, you can get this from DigiKey and Mauser really easily, and there's like literally a hundred of them, so I thought we'd only carry ones that I found particularly useful, which is what we do. Yeah. Uh, next up, are you guys going to carry gas sensors, CO2, alcohol, alcohol etc. at any point? Uh, maybe. You know, the thing is, none of them are that great. Yeah, they're not that great, so I want to make sure I understand. Like, I've, I've used them, and uh, I've never been super happy with the quality, yeah. so we'll see. Next up. Have you all thought of starting a share space offsite? Um, no, people, uh, other people do that. There's WeWork, there's um, hacker spaces that do yeah. that. Um, our expertise is electronics and um, sharing and learning and tutorials. Um, it's logistically really hard to run a space in New York City. Trust me, I know. Uh, getting Adafruit set up here, code compliant with everything, uh, working with architects, electricians, HVAC, all that stuff. Um, yeah, it's, was... it's very hard to run a space. It's 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 a it's ten full time jobs. But there there are there's like six co working spaces within a mile. Yeah, there's a ton. There's tons. Uh, next up, if I want to drop voltage on a three volt coin cell and the current is in the circuit is using something point zero 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 five amps using Ohm's law required the resistor is one point two ohms. Is this thinking right? If I want to drop the voltage in a coin cell. Um, you can use a resistor, but I would just use a regulator, probably. Okay. I mean, I don't know, or a diode or something, if you just want to drop it a certain amount. Because a resistor will vary with the current. Oh, this drop. is going to be an easy question. Which 3D printer does Lady Ada like the most? Um, you know, I don't use a 3D printer that much, but we do have the MakerBot replicator here. And yeah. it's, it's been... We replicator have too is solid. It's pretty solid. Yeah, we like it a lot. We have the Adafruit edition. Um, but you know what? All 3D printers are pretty cool these days. Yeah, I, I do like the Replicator too. There's um, a really good guide that Make did, and I think they also kind of pointed out that the Replicator too, kind of for the price, it kind of is best in class. It's yeah. the 3D printing guide uh, that uh, Matt Griffin worked on, who's uh, director of community and support here at Adafruit. So do check that out. They have a, a really good write-up. I have no idea how to uh, just, just put this feeder together. Is it okay I, to I run an RGB halfway. LED from a coin cell without a resistor? I have seen both ways. Uh, yeah, you, you can. Um, the red segment, it might be good to put a, uh, a small resistor on there. But uh, the green and the blue don't need it because their forward voltage is higher than the coin cell. Yeah. Um, someone mentioned Utilimaker. I like Utilimaker too. Um, yeah. The the Cubify, the new one that came out, that looks good. I haven't seen it in person yet. Um, it's a great time to get 3D printers. Um, I don't know what I Yeah, well, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so we're having training. So you want to put that on the overhead real quick, just to show yeah, it? Yeah, I can share sort like. of what I started doing. I don't I think that I think I definitely found out like that this goes here. Yeah, you're out of focus a little bit. This goes here. But anything more than that, I'm not completely sure. This is how the, the tape comes along in the yeah. reel. But more than that, I'm not sure. But I'll figure it out later. Yeah. 
Okay. It's trivia question time, Lady Ada. Beautiful feeders, though. Ming Korea. It's trivia question time. What are the rules? The rules are, if you've won this uh, fabulous trivia contest and gotten a prize, you can't enter, so just sit in your hands, or put together some feeders. <laughs> um, the first person with the correct answer... Tonight's prize a is an Arduino Micro without headers. We just got these in, and people are loving them, and so uh, it was a special request for someone. They said, I'm going to try to enter this week. I'm, I'm going okay, I'm, I'm to that headers. I'm going to study everything that's on the, the show. Um, I, I really it. wanted to win that, that micro without headers. Okay, we'll do that. So we're going to do that. Um, and then uh, if you don't win, just try again next week. Don't call us up on the phone. Yeah. Please. <laughs> All right. So the trivia question is to be the first person to type this in that we see in the chat. Okay, get ready. And I'll answer that question that just came in. All right. How many tutorials are on learn.adafruit.com? Were you paying attention? Yeah. So uh, someone said, do you buy your own equipment or do you... Uh, we buy our own equipment. We buy it all. And no loans and no uh, capital. Uh, okay. Venture capital. Okay. Uh, OF Silencer 208, congratulations. That is correct. Email support at 208. And we have it at the bottom. So it's easy to see how many we have. Um, Yay. Congratulations. Email support at You win. Include your mailing address and we will send you out a Arduino micro with. Was letters. that the person who wanted to win? Uh, I don't know. Um, but we did so. get an email. Um, if not, try again to go back to that question, and then we're gonna wrap up the show. Uh, yes, we buy all of our equipment. Everything was paid for with wire transfer. We actually did. We had to book we, the final wire transfer. Yeah, we actually a day ago. They're like, so we see that you have photos of this on your blog. Yeah. You have to finish there's, paying for it. And we're like, okay. There's many different business philosophies and how to run a business. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. If you stay in business, you're probably you know it's hard to argue with success. Um, we like to pay for things and not have to. Um, owe anybody anything. We, we yeah. do like to, to own the stuff, and uh, that's the way we do stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, that is uh, it for this week. We will see everybody next week. Thanks to uh, George, who records the show every week. Uh, we had some staff here. Uh, Becky was in. Uh, yeah. Paint Your Dragon was in. John Janier was in. This is Paint Your Dragon's awesome stereo, which I can't turn on because YouTube yeah. will ban us for life. Yeah, everybody everybody had a little bit of um, content that they worked on during the week in the show. It's Yay! And uh, we'll see everybody next week. Um, if uh, things go well with training, we might have a little bit of uh, live uh, pick and place um, uh, yeah. stuff. We'll see. We have training um, all next week, yeah. and if the pick and place runs, which I, I think it will, hopefully, well, maybe we'll get it lit up and we'll run a board live. Yeah. Okay. So thanks, everybody. It'll be really fast. Here is a picture of MOSFET. Here he is lounging, oh, out, lounging yeah. out on the couch. That's what he does all day. This is what he does. He just hangs out. Yeah. Meow. Meow, 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 meow. And here is your moment of Zener.